Okay, this tutorial is a brief introduction to Elliott wave theory. Elliott wave theory was discovered by Ralph Elliott, and I mean discovery by because he thought he didn't create the theory, but his achievement was to unveil the theory inherent in nature. So wave theory basically can explain all cycles and predict targets for the assets analyzed. So there is no theory among economic economics that can achieve that. Uh, either cannot explain the past behavior or they cannot predict future behavior. Elliot bases his theory in the basic pattern. The basic pattern is an impulse uh, turn. In this case, is in this case, is an uptrend a format of five waves. Waves one, two, three, four, and five. So this is an uptrend, and the main concept in the theory is the inherent fractal theory inside the pattern. Uh, before, uh, ver uh, many decades before mathematicians, Elliot used the concept of fractal. So as the theory unveils, you can see if you're in a five-wave pattern, you know that wave one will subdivide in fives because it's in favor of the turn. So wave three and five, the same. You can subdivide those waves that go in favor of the turn in five waves, and the waves two and four that usually correct this behavior will be subdivided in three waves. So we can see a complete pattern. As we can see, waves one, two, three, four and five are part of a one wave. So we have a big one wave, very large, that is subdivided in fives. So wave one, two, uh, one, three and five of this pattern is also subdivided in five and wave two and four that are actual corrections inside the first impulse are divided in three. So the grade of this correction are minor respect of the wave 2 of a larger degree that we can see on the chart. The main key in wave counting is when you are in a big correction as we can see in wave 2, when you have the waves labeled A, B and C, waves A and C are in favor of the correction. So as they are in favor of the overall correction, you have to subdivide it in five waves. And on uh, wave B, that is a counter trend of the correction inside the correction, you have to subdivide them in three, so you subdivide A, B, C. You can see as we have here an one, two movement that the next movement when wave 2 is complete will be a wave 3 that we sh uh, should subdivide in 5 wave patterns. So keep in mind the needed 5 subwaves when you are in favor of the turn and the 3 waves ABC when you are in counter turn. Here we have a perfect sample of the Elliott wave impulses on NASDAQ 100 ETF. Our first pivot is, you can see it at your upper left, the high 54.5506. First wave is completed till low 48.65. So there you have a correction up till the max high 52.84. So, we get the downturn again till the third wave in the low 41.61. In wave 4, we have a high of 45.87 and finally the impulse ends at the low 42.01. We have to take into account an Elliott rule that says, uh, the alternance rule that says you have 
if you have a wave 2, as in this case, that is simple, your wave 4 will be complex. For example, a triangle. This one was a triangle, it was pretty forward, so when we have at the support at the breakout, we have outlaw and the impulse was completed. So now we will use our site's Elliott Wave Projections calculator to see how we can predict those targets that in the chart we can see. Here we have our Elliott Wave Projections calculator. Over here we have the rotation ratios, the most probable, and in turquoise we have the pivots we have to enter. So, as in the example, we begin with 55.06 and our first wave is from there to 48.65. Okay. Here we have the extension of the wave 1, 6 more or less, and here we have the up targets for wave 2 taking in into account 5 hour wave 1. We have 3 targets and as we can see 2 of them are in bold. The targets in bold are the most likely to take place. Our next pivot for wave 2 is 52.84 so our wave 2 is 4 more or less in extension and as we can see exceeds just a little the higher target of 52.61 so now we have our two wave complete wave 1 and wave 2 we can go and see now we have four targets the ones generated taking into account wave 1 and the ones generated taking into account wave 2. So these are our down targets for wave 3. So as before, the bold ones are the most likely to occur 42, 47, and 4606 are the most likely. So as the movement took place we have our next pivot our next pivot is 41.61 so with this we have our third wave complete so our third wave is 11 dollars more or less in extension we can see that it, uh, it takes into account the rule that uh, wave 3 has never to be the shortest wave so how 11 is bigger than 6 we achieve that rule now taking into account the next pivot now we have the targets up for wave 4 in wave 4 usually we have more targets since we can do calculation based on wave 3 wave 2 and the extension between wave 1 and 3. Again, we have bold targets that are the most likely to take place. So as the market continues, we have our next pivot in 45.87. As we can see, it's very close to one of the bold ones based on wave 2. It was 45 80. So we have to take into account the bold ones since are the most likely to take place. Now with the wave 4 pivot in place we have our projections down to get wave 5. So as before we have targets based on wave 1, on wave 1 to 3, wave 2 and wave 4. As we can see in here we have bold ones as well that are the most likely. So the final pivot in this countdown 
was 41.05 as we can see we have the most one of the most likely to occur in the extension 1 to 3 at 40.73 so that was the one nearest to the target so this is a calculator for Elliott wave projections when they are an impulse so you have only to go to our site and put in the pivot numbers you have to get your calculations and take into account this tutorial to know the way that you are calculating those targets in a correct manner.